Please all stand for the reading of God's Word. Today's scripture is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, verses 26 to 27. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Thank you. You may be seated. Can I ask everybody to close their eyes and let's pray together for a minute. Lord God, our Father in heaven, you lead us together on a special journey. For each of us, Father, you have special plans, a special path that we are to follow. As this sermon becomes part of that journey, Father, let it be your voice that people hear. Let my voice be weak so that your voice that quiet, gentle voice speaking to people's hearts. Let that voice be strong, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Evergreen, we've been doing a series on transformation, and I was asked to repeat this series for the congregation about how God is leading us in our lives. The reality is when God called you to be his sons and his daughters, he never planned for you to remain as you were. He has a path for you, a journey for you, a destination for you, a special life that is just for you because he loves you. The first sermon, we looked at the marks of transformation, the way that this changes our lives. And we realized that to understand the transformation that we go through, we need to understand our starting point. To understand the journey that we are on, we need to know where we are coming from. And we said that the word between described our lives, that we are between. We are between being young and being old. Some of us are younger, some of us are older, <laughs> but we're all between. And we're between birth and death. Some of us used to look like this, but will one day look like this. That isn't me, but something like that a long, long time ago. And in the future, this is our destination, a time to leave this world. We are between, between these states. And between is a difficult state, a state when in our hearts we often feel like this, this state of perpetual adolescence, of being between, being a child and being an adult, being young and being mature, being a teenager in our hearts, not a child, not an adult, but between, going through a time of testing, a time of doubt and confusion, a time of testing and decision, a time of preparing and learning, a time of growing. Between our beginning in a new life that God gave to us when we accepted Jesus into our lives and the completion as we become like Christ. As we go on this journey, we can see how we are transformed, that we are baptized as a symbol to show that we've given our lives to God, that we give our obedience to God's word, that we have a freedom from this society, a freedom that nobody who is not a Christian can understand. The fruit of the Spirit, your lives change, and you, give, and you become that you can love. You can love in a way that you could never understand as you rid yourself of the things that go wrong in our lives. As you rid yourself of anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language, and instead these things grow. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, 
faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. If you can see these, even in the tiniest part in your life, that is God working in your life, drawing you on the journey that He wants you to go on, transforming you to become what He wants you to be. His sons, His daughters, His precious children who belong to Him. That's the journey that we're on. But today we'll look at something about that journey because that journey has a price. It's not free. It never was. There's a cost that goes with that journey. The Bible warns us about this. We were never told just if you become Christian you will have all good gifts and wonderful things. A BMW in one car, in one house and a Mercedes parked in front of a second house a beautiful wife, millions of dollars in the bank. There is no promise of those things. But we are promised that there is a price that we pay. And we are warned of this. In Luke chapter 14, 28 to 30, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? When you started the journey, there was a cost. And are you willing to pay the cost? If you're willing to follow Jesus, if you're really willing to go on this journey, think about it. Are you willing to pay this price, the price that we are called to pay? If not, but if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying this foolish fellow began to build and was not able to finish. We're also warned further about this, Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. Many of you, when you became Christian, we didn't tell you the truth. We only told you the good things. We told you about being saved. We told you about being loved. We told you about going to heaven when you die. But we didn't tell you that there was a price. And if you want to give your life to follow where God leads you, if you really want to become what He wants you to become, there will be a cost. There might be in the things that we can understand very clearly, money. The money is not really yours. It's a gift from God. Your money is God's money. That's part of the cost, a financial cost perhaps. Your time, your time in coming to the church, your time in being with your brothers and sisters in Christ, your time in reading the Bible, your time in growing. Another cost, effort that you must make an effort to, to grow, that you must work to do this, that you must do things to help build. And sometimes it seems like a lot of trouble, a lot of difficulty. These are the things we can very easily understand when we talk about the cost, and they are part of the Christian life. Your money is not yours. Your time is not yours. Your effort is not yours. The trouble you go through is for the glory of God. All of these things belong to God. And this is part of the price that you're called to pay. But the Bible doesn't talk that much about that as being the cost. Instead, Jesus directs us towards something else. And he says, this, this is the cost. In Luke chapter 14, verse 27, and anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. The cross. This is the price. This is the cost. This is what you must pay to carry the cost. This is what will happen on your journey. The cross. Jesus spoke about this not once, but many times in the Bible. He spoke about it to his disciples.
telling them the truth, not promising them beautiful cars, not promising them luxury, not promising them whatever they wanted, but he promised them this, the cross. He spoke to the disciples in Matthew chapter 10, verse 38, as he sent them out, telling them the price to carry the cross. He spoke to, it again, to them again in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, after Peter's confession that Jesus was the Son of God. And then he told them the cost, that we must carry the cross to be his disciple. And in Matthew chapter 16, 24 to 27, again he said, where he spoke about his future. His future was the cross. He said that he must suffer and he must die. And then he turned to us and said, and you too, you must carry the cross and follow me. That's what it means to be a disciple. That's what it means to be on the journey. That's what it means to follow where God leads. This is what he said again and again and again. To be his disciple, you must take carry your cross and follow me. What does it mean? The cross. We see it behind me, above my head, on the wall. We see it every time when we come in here. Lots of crosses. Lots of crosses that we see when we're Christians. Your Bible might have it on the front cover. It's built into the architecture of this church. Some people wear it around their neck. We see it so often when we're Christian. But what does it mean to carry the cross? What were Jesus' words to us? What is the cost of this journey that we're on? The price that we must pay if we really want to become what God wants us to become. For Jesus, it was this. Jesus' cross, suffering. Jesus' cross was shame. Jesus' cross was being abandoned by his friends. Jesus' cross was death. This was a cross that Gary Jesus carried. For some people, that's the cross that they're called to carry too. In some countries, some places where Christianity is forbidden. For you, perhaps, I don't know. I don't know what's God's path. But you will experience suffering. You will experience shame at some time in your life. Maybe not the same as Jesus, but you will experience these things. You will feel abandoned and you will leave this world. We could focus on this. Perhaps this is the cross that we're called to carry. The cross is such a strange thing, so important for us to understand as Christians, and yet in many ways it's beyond our understanding what it means. Sometimes I look at myself up the front and I'm ashamed. Because when I was first Christian, when I was first baptized, I understood so little about the cross. So little. And yet I was baptized. Sometimes I almost say, please baptize me again. <laughs> because now I understand better. 
The cross means different things in your life. As you go through this journey, you'll look at these cross and it'll mean different things at different times. It will be in your heart in different ways. As you carry it through your life, that cross will change. Your understanding of it will change as you grow, as you follow the journey. At some point in your life as a Christian, the cross is this. An invitation. We see the cross and it invites us. It invites us to come. It invites us to see. It invites us to be loved. And it invites us to share love with others. This is the cross. This is what it means when we look at it. The cross is an invitation an invitation for you, an invitation for others, an invitation for you to bring others, to tell them, come and see, come and know, come and be loved, come and share love. The invitation. This is the cross at some time in your life, a stage that you will go through on the journey, that you will feel, look, look at the cross, and you will know that God invites you. And this is what it means to you. And this is the cross that you carry at that time. Others, they see the cross like this. This is the cross that you carry, the time in your journey. The cross is worship. The cross that you look at and you want to kneel and you want to pray, and you want to worship God for what he's done. But this is the cross for many people, a place of worship, knowing that Jesus died on the cross and what that meant for us, and we worship. For some of you, particularly people who like jewelry, Maybe the cross looks like this, something very valuable with diamonds and rubies and emeralds embedded into it. Not a bad thing. The cross has value. And as you grow, as you go on your journey, you will realize the value more and more. Even though in this world, you will never fully understand the value. And yet, as you grow, more and more you will realize that the cross you carry is a valuable thing, infinite value, value beyond anything in this world, value beyond anything you can understand. But the cross is an invaluable thing and you will go through this stage on your journey and you'll see it as being something of great value. In Matthew chapter 13, verses 45 to 46, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. The cross has value. As you grow as your Christian, you will come more and more to understand that value. But in this world, you will never really understand but that can be the cross that you carry at some time in your life, the cross of value. For some of you, at some part of your journey, the cross will be like this. The cross is a mystery, something we look at and we wonder, and we gaze and we think, how? something so simple, but meaning so much. It's a mystery that in this world we'll never understand. But it's something so special that God puts this mystery in your heart that you can wonder at it, that you can look towards the cross and struggle to understand it. This is the mystery. As you go through your life, this is the cross. 
the cross that you will carry because that's what Jesus calls you to do. If you are called to be his disciple, you are called to carry that cross, a cross that is an invitation, a cross that is a place of worship, a cross that is of infinite value, and a cross that is a mystery, a mystery you can ever understand because the love of God is beyond our understanding. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. A mystery beyond our understanding, a mystery that we struggle to understand the greatness of God's love that he would do this for us. And this is the cross. And for some times in your life, the cross will be this in wreckage, in ruins, and yet rising above it. This was the World Trade Center after the buildings collapsed. Ruin, destruction, so much loss, and yet rising out of all that was the cross. Hope. This is the cross. This is the cross you carry. The cross you are told to carry by Jesus. The cross that you carry for yourself, for other people, for this world. Hope. In your life when it feels ruined, when you feel hopeless, when you feel everything is against you, and yet rising out of that is the cross. This is the cross that we carry. Invitation, worship, value, mystery, hope, perhaps other things. As you grow as a Christian, as you follow the journey, the cross will come to have more and more meaning in your heart and in your soul and in your mind. You will come to understand it more and more and it will come to be so special to you. How are you called to carry this cross? It will change, but still throughout your life, some things will continue because we're called to carry it in a particular way. In Luke chapter 9, verse 23, then he said to them all, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. We pay a price. We carry the cross. And this is every day of your life. There is never a day that you can put it down. Never a day to say, today I don't want it. Never a day to say, to turn away from the cross. But daily through your life, you will carry the cross. And you will grow. And you will learn. And you will understand. And you will be a blessing to this world. Because you carry the cross as Jesus did. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself. We deny ourselves. There are some things that this world offers that are not for you. There are some things that we have to turn away from. Some things that say, if we carry the cross, we must turn away from those things that the world says are so important, but we know are meaningless because we carry the cross. We deny what the world offers us, and we take what God offers us. For if anyone wants to save his life, Anyone who wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for, my, for me will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit his very self? There is nothing that this world has to offer you that has any value beyond the cross that you carry. Even if you gain the whole world, you've lost everything. But to carry the cross, you have everything. 
If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. We follow Jesus. He is our example as we carry the cross. From Jesus' example, we learn. From Jesus' example, we learn to pray. From Jesus' example, we serve. From Jesus' example, we love. From Jesus' example, we forgive. Because that is, the, that is the example that Jesus gives us. He tells us, take up your cross and follow. Follow me. That's the price. Will you pay it? Will you pay this price? It's a cost. But Jesus says it's not so heavy. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The cross is something special to carry. And yet when you follow this path, you realize that the burden is light. It is easy. This is the only way when you turn away from the world and turn towards the cross. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. This is your journey. If you want to be transformed, if you give your life to be what God wants you to be, this is the price, this is the journey, this is the only way daily to deny yourself what the world offers, anything that draws your eyes away from God. We follow Jesus as in his example. We pray, we learn, we serve, we love, we forgive. We take up our cross and we follow. Perhaps you look at it and it looks like this. So many of us carrying our crosses and following Jesus. But I see one more image of the cross and I think that this is what we need to focus on. This cross. In John chapter 8 verse 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The cross that you carry is the light in the darkness. In Luke 9, 24, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses it for me will save it. The cross, the light in the darkness, and the cross is life. This is the journey that we're on. We're called to carry the cross. Will you pay the price? Will you accept this burden? What you're called to carry? We're told that the burden is light, that the price is not so heavy, but still it's there. Will you pay this price, the price, the cost that you're called to pay to be on this journey? I'd like everybody to close their eyes. And I'd like you to think about this in your heart. What does the cross mean to you in your stage? Invitation, worship, value, mystery, hope. What is it? Will you carry this cross throughout your life daily, denying yourself? and following Jesus.
Lord God, our Father in heaven. We come to you knowing, Father, that your word does not say that our lives as Christian will be only comfort, will be only happiness, that we will have wealth, that we will have good health, that we will only have the things that the world values and that you will give us those, but instead you give us something special. You give us the cross. Through the cross and the resurrection, we know that we are yours, that we are your children, your sons and your daughters, and we belong to you. Through the cross, we can grow, grow in understanding, grow in love, grow closer and closer to you, grow to be the children that you want us to be. Through the cross, we can call others, others to let them know, to let them know in this world of darkness that there is light, in this world of death that there is life, in this world of hopelessness that there is hope and that it comes from you through the cross. Let us have the strength, Father, and the courage and the wisdom to take up the cross that you call us to carry. Whatever it is, Father, whatever the crosses that you have on our journey at our particular time for each individual person, whatever the cross, let us take it up and let us daily follow Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Father, for this blessing. We thank you, Father, for the cross.